Oh wow, look at here. We got an email, Pa. From who? Kerwin Slippers. Who's Kerwin Slippers? I don't know. Very important, please read Carol, it says. I don't know, maybe we should check this out. I don't know if we should open it. Might be spam. Here. Dearest Terrell, I'm writing to inform you that I won't be able to make it in to see you for a couple of days. I know it's going to be hard for you without me there, but I assure you I'll be back ASAP. If it wasn't for that no good kid of yours, I wouldn't have to have this surgery on my foot. I'm going to need a claim form, but we'll talk about that when I get back. See, see you, you soon. soon. Sincerely, your best friend and customer, Kerwin P. Slippers the Ace. No, it's Kerwin P. Slippers Vibe. Well, all I know is he ain't gonna be here for a few days. No slippers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who's here? Who's here? Well, we know it ain't slippers. It ain't slippers. I, I don't see anybody right now. Yeah. You're dreaming. You're dreaming. Who's that guy? Uncle Andy. Uncle Andy? I didn't even know I had it, Uncle. He's not your uncle. He's not? Well, why didn't I call him Uncle Andy? You'll see. It's me, Uncle Andy. What do you want? I'm just trying to I haven't seen you in a while. Okay, now you How see you me. Doing? Now you've seen us, now you can leave. How you doing? Well, you ain't gonna be hanging out here. Well, I'm not gonna get anybody's way. Is your dad know you're working on this? Yeah, yeah, Andy. My dad told me to work on this, in fact. Oh yeah? Well, is, he, is he treating you good? Is he treating you alright? Yeah, he's treating me fine. What do you want? You know how to work on all this stuff? Yeah, Andy, I know how to work on all this stuff. Oh, that's awesome. That's just awesome. Oh, what are you gonna use this for? You know, Andy, if you're gonna be hanging around here, you might as well put you to work. Oh, okay, what do you got for me? How about you clean the office? Okay, I love offices. I love cleaning. All right, go clean the office. Okay, see what we got. Stay out of my business. Can, can I get a bottle of water? Yeah, you can have a bottle of water. Oh, okay, thanks. There's many different types and styles of snow blowers out there today. There's three stage, two stage, single stage, four stroke, two stroke, red ones, green ones, yellow ones, orange ones, homemade ones. Hi, I'm Pterodactyl, inner screen how-to guru. And look, snowing outside. You know what that means? Time to get these snow blowers ready. And today we're going to go over carburetors on Tecumseh's engines. And we're going to go over two different carburetors. And I'm going to show you how to rebuild them and what to look for when you are rebuilding them. Okay, we're going to go over these two carburetors on these Tecumseh's engines. Now this old snowblower has an adjustable carburetor. So you can actually adjust the high speed and low speed circuit on it. And this newer 10 horse one it doesn't have any adjustments on it. So I'm going to cover both of them. Adjustable carburetor and non-adjustable. So first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to start on this 10 horse. So you're going to want to pull this heater shroud off. Because air fil uh, snow blowers don't have air filters on them. They have this heater box which takes heat off the muffler and that's what warms this up in there. Because Snow blowers run in uh, clean conditions. That's why they don't have air filters. You don't need an air filter. It's not running in dirt. So there's a screw here you want to take out. There's a screw here. And then you got these two screws here. Phillips head. And then you're going to want to disconnect. You're going to want to pull this choke knob off. It just pulls off. Then you're going to have to slide that off of that post and then there's a wire under here for this little key and we get the wire down and that just plugs in on this kill tab here now you got this heater box off now a good thing to do before you take the carburetor off oh look here this is another problem looky here looky here 
This primer bulb hose done rotted off. See that hooked in right there. That's a common problem. Now, you got two choices. Replace this hose or try to pull enough of it and hook it back on there. All right, we're going to take this carburetor off from here, from this manifold up here. That looks to be the easiest place to take it off. And it looks like it's got Torx head. So I got a Torx head screwdriver. And I'm going to break them loose. Remove them screws. Now that falls away. So the only link we're going to take off is this one. All right, I'm going to take this and I'm going to scratch a mark in there so I know which hole it went into. All right, before we disconnect that fuel line from that carburetor, this one has got a shutoff valve, but if it don't have a shutoff valve, you can pinch it off. I got these fuel line pinchers. If you don't get them, get them at the auto parts store. Now I'm going to take this fuel line off. Now this fuel line, I'm going to replace it. It's all old and icky and hard, and I'm going to show you how to do that, an easy way to do that. So we got that off. Now I'm going to take this Take that out of there, and I got that hole mark. I will just let that hang. Now I got the carburetor. Now we can take it to the bench and start taking her apart. All right, this carburetor, this one's got a dump valve on it, which is good. So like when you go to store it, you could drain the bowl before you store it. You just push up on that and drain all the gas out of it. Not all of them have these, but this one does, and a lot of people don't know they're on there. So that's good for storage, that way you wouldn't be rebuilding this carburetor. Oh, I can tell this one's dirty. Yeah, look at that. Look at what that fuel did. All right, ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Ah, oh, look at that. Ooh, that's nasty. Look at that nasty boogers in there. The floats all colored and sticky. It smells bad. Pull this gasket off, bowl gasket, there's the needle, it's got a brass float, we're going to change it to the plastic one because the brass one tends to pick up fuel. You could shake it, if you hear gas in it, you need a new one. There's a seat down in there, the rubber seat, and this one has a plastic nozzle in there that's got holes in it too and O-rings on it. Under here, looky here, let me get my little screwdriver. This is a low speed jet. There's a little cap covering that. Pop that cap off, you don't need it anymore. See, now we can take that out, that's a jet. This bowl nut is also a jet. See down the center of it, there's a little hole. That's gotta be clean. Take this gasket off. See how this works? There's holes in the side, that's where the gas goes in. And then when the engine starts, or vacuum sucks it up through that center. Kind of a bad design because any kind of crap, gravity is going to fall right there. So we're going to have to soak this carburetor. I'm going to take some more of it apart and show you. Low speed jet right here. This is a jet. This isn't an adjustment. This is a jet that's got to be in there tight. See, there's a little tiny hole down the center of that too. Now in some of my other carburetor videos, I show you about drilling that out a little bit if it's surging. So what you'd want to do is if you got an engine that's surging after you rebuild the carburetor, you can open that up. I would just go up one size from what it is. But again, you're going to need jet drills for that. Under this freeze plug are little holes. I could also show you how to take that freeze plug out too if you want to know. Do you want to know? I bet you do. So I'll just take it out to show you anyway. Alright, look at all these different kits for all these different model carburetors and they all got a different amount of parts in them. Some have the Welch plugs. So you're going to have to look up your model engine and carburetor on the inner screen and figure out what specific carburetor kit that you need 
to rebuild your carburetor. But what I use is this kit here. Can you see that number, Mr. Cameraman? What is that number? 631021B. And in this kit, it's the bowl gasket, the needle and seat, and the and the nut gasket or the bowl nut. And then here's the float number. What's that number, Mr. Cameraman? <sighs> 632019A. And that's the new plastic float that replaces this brass one. And then that's what a new float bowl should look like. This one doesn't have the dump in it, but you can see how dirty it is. We, we can clean this one. We're going to clean this one. And there's also a number for this gasket on here, too. I don't know what it is, but you can look it up and see if you have that dump one or if you just this this bowl only costs a couple bucks you might just want to buy a new one but if you want to clean it go ahead now I went ahead and took this bolt out and I'm going to show you how to remove that welts plug or freeze plug whatever you want to call it drill a little hole in it and don't go all the way through and then you need a small straight pick tool that you can get in there. I got one here that's bent. Stick it in that hole and you can pop that plug out. That's how you remove these plugs. Come on, this one's being a booger. Come on, Mr. Plug. There we go. And see? Can you see that, Mr. Cameraman? There's three little holes in there, four little holes. There's one there. So, want to make sure that those are clear. Now, you don't have to do the, the welch plug thing if you don't want to. But I'm doing it anyway. Oh, look at this. See, this throttle shaft. Look at that. Won't even move. It's so, so gummed up. I can't even get it. Oh, I'm pushing it. Oh, there it goes. Look at that. It's all sticky. Same with the choke. This carver trader is pretty, pretty gummed up. So we're going to soak it. Oh yeah, I'm going to pull out that center nozzle too. And those center nozzles are all different colors. Some of these carver traders have a brass nozzle in it. So if it's got a brass nozzle in it, you don't remove it. I don't even want you looking in there. If it's got a brass one, don't even look in there. So I'm going to take a screwdriver and pop that out. That little nozzle is only a couple bucks too. So if you're going to do this right, you need to take this thing all apart so that way when you put it all back together, you know that you completely went through this carburetor. And this is all from gas sitting in there. See what that gas does? That's nasty stuff, that gas. Okay, I got a screwdriver. Now I'm going to try to pop that nozzle out from the inside out. Got to get on top of that nozzle. See, it's breaking because it's stuck in there. So we're going to put a new one in. Yep, it's so in there so hard. It's probably all full of boogers, so it should come out anyway. Just soaking it ain't going to clean it. We're going to have to dig it out of there. There we go. See? It was a little gummy. There's little holes drilled in here, and if they ain't clear... It ain't gonna run right. Like I said, this part's only a couple bucks. You're gonna have to look it up for your specific model and make sure you get the right nozzle. Now there's another O-ring down in there because there should be two. One on the top in this groove and one on the bottom. But this bottom part broke off too. So I'm gonna try to get that old O-ring. I can feel it in there. All right, there's a seat in there for the needle and seat, and I'm going to put a new one in. Tecumish makes a tool. This one's all bent up because I use it a lot. But they make a tool for removing that seat. Another thing you can do is just take compressed air. Now, don't point this at anybody because that thing's going to come shooting out of there. Hear it? It just popped out. And then one other thing, I like using these. These are torch tip cleaners for cleaning the 
tip on a torch. And it's like little mini files. But they work good for rotting stuff out. Now, some people will have a carburetor that they're trying to rebuild and they put a new needle and seat and everything in it and it still leaks. It's like, I put a new float in it, I put a new needle and seat in it and it's still leaking gas. I don't know why. I'm going to show you why. A lot of people don't know this. On the side of this carburetor, and I don't know if the cameraman can see it, there is a little tiny vent hole right here. And it, see, if this vent hole gets clogged up, see how dirty this one is? If it gets clogged up, it can't vent and the gas will overflow. So I'm going to show you there's a hole in there by sticking that. See, I just stuck that in there. A lot of people don't know that that's there, that that little hole is there. Same on this main jet. This main jet's got a little hole too, right around the side here that's drilled on an angle. It's hard to find, but it's in there. So you got to be aware of these little holes that are hiding everywhere. This one's all clogged up, but there's a little hole here that's drilled at an angle. You got to make sure that's clear too. We're going to take all these parts and soak them now. Okay, now I use the purple power. Now I've had some people contact me and said, I use that purple power on another one of your videos for carburetor, Terrell, and it made my carburetor all chalky and it discolored it and everything. Some of these carburetors are made out of different metals and this stuff will act differently to the different metals. I put some carburetors in here and uh, they come out sparkling clean. I bring uh, other ones I put in there, they come out chalky. It does the same thing in my ultrasonic cleaner too and I'm using that solution that's for carburetors and it's still doing it. So, I'm going to revise this a little bit. I've got this purple power mixed 50-50. That's half water, half purple power. Now, don't let it sit in there overnight. Sometimes you only got to soak these carburetors for a few hours. So just check it. Take it out after a couple hours, wash it, and then try to keep your hands out of this stuff. It is a, a degreaser, it is strong, or wear rubber gloves. You got to use common sense. Read the directions. There are directions on there. You know how to read, don't you? Read. So, I'm going to put the main jet in there, the float bowl, the low speed jet, and the whole carburetor. And then we're going to let it soak. And then I'm going to go check on that Andy and see what that knuckle heads up to. Okay, now we're going to start on this one since that other carburetor is soaking. Now, on this Toro, you got to take this out of the way so you can get this cover off. So just unbolt that, take it out of the way, take these screws out for this heater box. These screws are a mile long, I didn't know they were that long. Pull off the choke knob again. This one, you just got to loosen that screw because it's on a slot. Slide it off, and again, see, primer hose is rotted off. Now this one, luckily, is easy to get to to replace. See if it's got a shut off. If not, clamp off the fuel line. This one's got a shut off. Again, mark the hole, whatever hole. Get your Sharpie or something to scratch it with. Make a mark on it so you put it back in the right hole. And then I see somebody changed the bolts on here. They're not Phillips head. They put hex heads in there. So I got to get a wrench for that. And we're going to pull this carburetor off. Disconnect this fuel line. All right. Got the cover off. So now I'm going to scratch this so I know what hole it went in. So I can, because after I clean it, if I was to use a pen or something, it would just, the cleaner would just take that pen mark off. Here we go. Let's see what boogers are in this one. One, 
two, three. Oh yeah, it's dirty. Not as bad as that other one. Oh, look at this bowl gasket. Look at that. That's hard as a carp. Brass float, which we're going to get rid of. See how these carp traders are similar? Oh, this one, the needle's missing. This guy complained that this was leaking gas. I wonder why. Needle's missing. Float. I don't hear no gas. Now, this one's got the brass nozzle up the middle. That's the one I told you don't mess with. That don't come out. Don't even be looking in there. Bowl, pretty dirty. Adjustable, high-speed jet that comes apart. There's an O-ring and a little brass washer. There's a little washer. There's the O-ring. We're going to want to replace all that, see? O-ring, hard as a carp. And again, like I told you on the other one, there is a little hole in here that's drilled on an angle. Got to make sure that's clear too. Another Welsh plug, just like on that other carburetor. And then this is the low speed needle. Now, on the carburetor, with the real long needle like this, this is very important. Let me dig out. There's another little brass washer in there. See? And another O-ring. I don't want to bend up that needle. Let me use this pick tool. Hard as a carp. There's a little tube that, that rides up and down in here. It's a little tiny tube. You should be able to hear that. Go up and down. I can't hear it. Now that'll probably clear up once we soak it. But what we want to do is be able to hear that. Yeah, it sounds like it's doing it. You want to hold everything from moving. I can hear that tube sliding up and down. That little tube's got to move up and down. If it doesn't, if it's stuck in there, it's not going to idle. This carburetor won't idle. It'll run on fine on high speed, but as soon as you try to idle it down, it'll just die out. This is the easiest way to ruin this carburetor. That tube has to be down when you put this needle back in. If you go to resemble this carburetor and you have it like this and you put this needle in, the tip of that needle is going to crush that little tube now you've just ruined this carburetor. It'll run on high speed, but it won't run on low. And another thing, just like on that other carburetor, there's a little vent hole here. You got to make sure that vent hole is clear. These are little tricks that if you don't know, if that ain't clear, this thing will leak gas. Okay, so when you go to reassemble this carburetor, you can hear that tube, it is moving. Another thing, is you can shine a light down there and you can see that too. It's hard to see on the camera, but I can see that tube and then when I turn it this way, I can see it fall down. So I know that tube is moving. Quickest way to ruin this carburetor, put that needle in when it's in this position. That tube's down, this needle's going to crash right into that tube. You just ruined this carburetor. It's junk. You can't fix it. It'll run on high speed, but it won't run on low and it won't idle. So make sure that tube is down, the carburetor is like this, when you go to reinstall this needle with the O-ring on it. So now we've got the carburetor all apart where we want it. I bagged up my parts from the other carburetor. These are all the junk parts from the other carburetor. I'm going to put a new float in this carburetor. So this is what we're going to soak. We're going to soak this and we're going to soak the carburetor. And then we're going to reassemble them, and then I'm going to show you how to, a uh, neat trick on how to put new fuel lines on, on those, uh, when we go to put the carburetors back on after they're all nice and clean and rebuilt. Okay, here's those two carburetors. I soaked them in that purple power, 50-50 mix. You can see how they came out. I rinsed them off in water and blew them all off. 
Sometimes I put carb spray on it, you know, to clean it real good, put a little carb spray on it, so you're going to need carb spray. It's good to have. These little brushes. Now I got these in a three pack at Dollar General. They had a wire brush, a plastic brush, and a brass one. Q-tips, always coming good. You can spray the end with carb cleaner and you can get in there and clean little, little spots with Q-tips. And of course, I went over this earlier, these torch tip cleaners are like little files. And that's how they are. What I do is I cut the tip back down to where the file part is so I can get in there and file. So these are handy. So you might want to get a set of these. They're not too expensive. So I went ahead and cleaned everything. Look at the float bowls. Look at how clean they came just by soaking them. So now our parts. Remember I was talking about that nozzle? I took that nozzle out. It was green. Look how many different colors they got for different carbitrators to come -ish. They got blue, they got pink, white, orange, red. The one we need is this green one. Here's the O-rings. Here's the part number for the O-rings that go on this nozzle. It takes two of them. Can you get that, Mr. Cameraman? And then, if you want to get this float bowl that has the dump in it, I got you the part number for that too. There's a part number for that float bowl with the dump, in case you want to convert your carburetor to the one with the dump. So now we're going to assemble these carburetors. I got these jets all clean. Everything's clean. First one we're going to start with is the, the 10 horse one. Gonna have to put that freeze plug back in. All right, I made sure all these holes were clear. You just drop the new welch plug in there. You're gonna put it on a solid surface. Then all you do is just flatten it out a little bit with a hammer and a punch. You don't have to hit it very hard. Just like that. You can even put some sealer around that if you want. Then I got my low speed jet that I cleaned, put that back in, tighten it down. I made sure all the holes were clean in that. Here's the nozzle with the O-rings, drop that down in there. Push it down a little bit. That's all there is to that. Okay, we got the nozzle in, we got the low speed jet in. So next, needle and seat. Here's that tool that the Cummish makes, 670377. That's for digging out the seat and installing the new one. And it also comes in handy for picking out those O-rings when you take this center nozzle out of these newer carburetors. So, take your seat. On one side of the seat is a little ring, and on the other side, it's smooth. You want the ring down. The needle is going to meet on the smooth side. You got that? So when you put this on the tool, you want to be able to see that ring. And then it doesn't hurt if you want to put a little lubricant on there to kind of shove it down in there, some WD-40. And then just take the tool, and it just seats that seat in there for you. Very simple. Makes it nice when you got the right tools. Now you're going to want to take this clip, hook it on the needle. See how it's got that little point on there? You want that little point towards the front of the new float. And then we're going to put the float on. And then we got to put the pin in. Then we're going to check the float height. Now see that's sitting pretty low. So to adjust it, oh, take a something small that you can get in there and bend on that tab on the float. 
Now it's too high. Now I got to get underneath it and bend it down a little bit. Now you either want it level or it can be a little bit a little bit hanging down. I like it like that. It lets a little more fuel in. Then just put your bowl gasket on. And now your float bowl. Now you notice that the float bowl is kind of got a ridge on there. See how it's not perfectly flat? You want that to line up with the hinge, just like this. Press it on there, make sure it seats. Then you got your new nut gasket. And then just tighten it down. Now, of course, I'm going to put that bolt back in, and then I'm going to put this choke thing back on. And then, new gasket. I got a new gasket for here. Look up all these parts under your model. Now, this one's done. Now, we're going to move on to the next one. Same thing. Another kit. Same needle, seat, everything. The only difference is... We got O-rings on here. I put the new O-rings on. Oh, and that gasket for the dump. In case you want to put a new gasket on there, that's 27554. So remember, like I told you earlier in the video, you want to make sure that tube's down. Now, if you got a flashlight, you can't see on camera, but I shine the light down in there. And I can see that that tube is not in the way. And when I flip it this way, I can see that tube in there. So I can act, you can actually see it. So it's down out of the way. So now we know this is going to go in there. And not smash it. And then I drop my screwdriver. Here it is. So it stops, don't force it, one full turn. Now I notice on this carburetor that this gasket here is bad. So I went ahead and got me a new gasket for that. I'm going to put a new gasket on there. So now that I got that screw in, I can flip this around, I don't have to worry. And also I clean this, and there's that little hole I was telling you right there on the side. Make sure that's clean. Same on this carburetor. This, this too had a little hole like that on the side. So when I cleaned this, I rotted everything back out with those rotters. So I'm going to go ahead and put this carburetor all back together. And... Okay, I got these carburetors all back together. I got all new manifold gaskets on each one. I got all the float set, needle and seats, everything's in. I went over everything. The only other thing I want to touch on is this adjustment on this adjustable carburetor. Turn that screw in all the way till it stops. And then back it out one and a half turns. That's a half, one, and a half. That's a good starting point. Now, before we install these carburetors, I'm going to show you how to replace the fuel lines. And I'm going to show you that over there. What the heck are you doing? Don't worry, Tao. I got everything under control. You knucklehead. Okay, I'm going to show you how to replace that fuel line on these to come engines because they run that fuel line right back through the motor. So I already got these screws out. Take these out. The ones on the bottom, you just loosen on this model. So what I did is I took a 5 16 bolt and I cut it off and kept the threaded part and I shoved that in one end of the fuel line the old fuel line and then I shoved the new fuel line on here oh you probably already know what I'm going to be doing here don't you and then I push and pull pull the old fuel line out while pulling the new fuel line in 
So as you're pulling, push on the new fuel line because you don't want to pull it out of that bolt. Twist it a little bit. Give it a little twist, a little pull. Look, see? Came right through. That's a neat trick, ain't it? Woo! And then I'll just go ahead and transfer this to the new fuel line, pull it back, and then I'll cut it off to the length I need here before I put the carburetor on. Oh, you got some extra movies over here? Yeah, Andy, we're making a video, so why don't you just be quiet and just keep sweeping and don't interrupt us while we're making the video. Okay, Tara. Okay, I got the new fuel line installed. I put the shutoff valve back on, tighten the tank back down, pull the slack out of the line under there. So now I'm going to hold it up here, and then I'm just going to gauge where I want to cut that fuel line. one take the two screws out and it's got a thing on the bottom same thing disconnect the fuel line and then get my my bolt trick stick it in the end do the same thing stick it in the old fuel line and pull the old line out and the new line in now to replace the primer Get the primer hose, and I got a 964 drill bit. I got an old drill bit that broke off. It fits in there tight. Same thing. Plug it into the old primer line, and on this primer, all you need is a little screwdriver. And you can just pop this off, see? And as you pull the old primer line out, you're pulling a new primer line in. So just make sure you buy enough primer line so you got enough. Pull out my drill bit. Pull the old fuel line off the primer. Shove it on there and then just pull it back through. Simple as that. That's how easy that is. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the new fuel line in on this and put the carburetor back on and then we're going to fire these up. Okay, I got the new hose pulled through. I got the gas tank back on. I got pulled it back a little bit. Make sure it's not kinking or anything under here. Make sure everything is smooth. And then I'm just going to stick this up here so I can kind of see where to cut this. And I'm going to mark it again with my finger and cut the fuel line off. Put the carburetor back on. Remember that we marked that hole for the link. Get that out of the way. And there's a the little scratch mark I put. You can put clamps on here if you want. This stuff is on there so tight, I don't even think you need the clamps. Pretty simple, huh? Once you know what you're doing. Ain't got to take a bunch of stuff off. Make sure these are good and tight. All right. We get this, route this, route this around now. Mark where you want that, cut that off. Plug that back in. Now I'm gonna leave this cover off till I run it, make sure everything's fine, and then the last thing I'll do is put the cover back on and then we're done. So after I get this primer hose on, we're gonna start them. Okay, we're all ready to start these. I got them all back together. Put it on fast. Put on the choke. Let's see how they run. Yeah, maybe I prime it too. Now remember, you 
you can always take that low speed jet out, which is right here, if you're getting any surging problems, you know, and if you might have to drill that one out, but this one seems to be running fine. Idle it a little high. You want to turn the idle down, you turn it down right there. That's your only screw is the idle screw. So this one runs. Let's check on the other one. Can, can I start this one? You want to start that one, Andy? Yeah, can I want to start this one. Okay, go ahead and start it. Uh, what do I do? Uh, you don't know how to start it? Uh, I've never seen one like this before, too. All right, I've got to pull the lever up, put choke on, now give it a pull. Okay. And take choke off. Traders, just think of these these screws as a water valve you know when you want to turn the water off at home you turn it in when you want to turn the water on you turn it out same with this you want more gas you turn it out you want less gas you turn it in so this carburetor obviously is fine at the way I said it because I didn't have to adjust it at all the only thing I did is I just lowered the idle a little bit but that's how you think of it when you're trying to tune one of these carburetors. If it's running too rich, you turn it in. If it's running lean, then you turn it out. And there's your dinner.